it's hard to leave at any point in the show, but mm -hmm. to go home first yeah. is awful. It's humiliating. And I was already well established. Yeah. And everything I had worked for up until those nine years was discredited, mm -hmm. vanished, gone. And, you know, I lost respect for my peers. And not only that, I lost respect for myself. Wow. As well. And so that led you into a spiral of alcohol, drugs. What was going on? Uh, well, so the first part was a he heavy depression. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't, I don't remember ever taking a picture where I had a smile on my face those first couple of months. They announced the contestants. We still had to wait. And then it was this whole year of just accents, excess, and just, you know, drag, sex, you know, rock and roll. I mean, it was just. Was this before the lead up to when it came out or it, after it came out? It was when it premiered. So, so it premiered, you were like, F it. I'm not, I'm on the first episode, but I can still, did you still get to go on? Did you still tour or? Oh yeah. I, yeah, so you were on the road. I was on the road. Uh, that first year, I went to 30 cities mm -hmm. in one year. I was, uh, when it first came on, I was literally f solely booked from February till September. Right. L literally lived at LAX. However, I couldn't enjoy what I was getting because I still had that in the back of my mind. Like, they're just feeling sorry for me. You mm -hmm. know, they're just... This is a fluke, you know, this is just a flash in the pan, you know, this is all gonna be over. You know, I couldn't really enjoy it because yeah. I was just so suffering and just so traumatized from what happened. And then at the same time, I didn't really talk about what happened, my side of the story. Mm -hmm. Because also this is, you know, when Drag Race was so young. Yeah. And, you know, now it's, you know, now it's on its 10th season. People have kind of seen between the lines and, mm -hmm. you know, seen, seen things and, I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to look like a sore loser. Mm -hmm. I didn't think people would believe me. I was just holding all this in. Right. And it was hurting me. And then after the tour, I, my 11 year relationship, I, we broke up and that killed me. And it, the transition was awful. And I had people around me as I added support system that really cared for me. However, they didn't have the best intentions for me. Right. They were like, come on, girl, we'll make you feel better. Let's yes. go do a bump or go do a whatever. Or, you know, they were partying with you, <laughs> but not caring about you. Exactly. Double period of major drugs. You hit the rock bottom. And how long after that does that strange addiction offer come in? It came in I, um, about 10 months later. Okay. So you had about 10 months to pull it together, but... 10 months is not that long after two years of hardcore drugs. Of course. Oh so my you're gosh. probably barely, yeah. barely out of it. Mm -hmm. You're still just first touching base with your mom. You bring your mom on Strange Addiction. Mm -hmm. And the Strange Addiction was, I'm addicted to looking like Madonna? Right. Okay. But did you really feel like you had an addiction to looking like no, Madonna? No, not at all. You were just doing it no. for that money, for that check. I was doing it for the money, you know. But... I they had therapy that maybe was helpful to you? Absolutely, they right. did. So I had done botched first. So Bosch was before this. Yes. Was Bosch when you were all high? No, I had left to New York. So you'd gone to New York. Yes. And that was when you were trying to get off drugs. Yes. So you went to New York, you were on Botched. Mm -hmm. And when did, how much, have you really had $175,000 worth of surgery? Honey. <laughs> yes. Woo. Oh, honey. <laughs> Was this the last thing money. you were able to buy because you spent all your money? <laughs> oh, I better enjoy this crystal. Mm. Now, did you have rich boyfriends pay for this thing with surgery no, yourself? I, I had my own show for some for before Drag Race. Right. I had, my own sh I had two of my own shows. So you saved all that money. Now, would you mind running down everything that you've had done? Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, ch uh, cheeks, cheekbones, jaw, chin... Botox, fillers, nose, just my whole face is fake. Uh -huh. so, uh, <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> you know, it just, well, I, ha I had two of my own shows. I was with the Dream Girls Review. Right. I was touring all over SoCal. Right. I was making a lot of money. Yeah, you were, do uh, you have the right fan? I think right here, you were busy. I was busy, <laughs> I was. You were making that money and you were spending that money real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, so you spent 175,000. What was the most expensive procedure? Oh, um, the nose. The nose. The nose. Because what was your nose like before? It had, um, it was, it was, was it a, a nose job to make it look more like Madonna or just a nose job to get it like the way you wanted it? It was, it was, because I had this really round fat nose when I was younger. Uh -huh. So I wanted them to slim it down a little bit. Right. And uh, that was, um, 
that was like around, I was 24. Wow. 24, 25, and I got that done. All my big surgeries, I got done in my early 20s. Wow. Because literally, I got like famous overnight. Uh -huh. Like I was being called a Madonna. I was hired like left and right and winning contests. And like, I was just, I like all this pressure was on me. Yeah, and it, you thought, so did you think like, I'm starting to do so well in person Madonna, I need to make sure that it's not just makeup that makes me look like Madonna. Mm -hmm. Was it, or was it more personal reasons? Was it business or personal? It was business because also um, I, my, I was more involved in the impersonation field, lookalike field. Right. So I had mentors, I had people I looked up to, and a lot of people, you know, so I said, hey, you know, I've had this done, I've had that done. Right, you and know, you were also in Dreamgirls with Chad, who had also had many procedures done. Right. Did you have ever, did you ever have procedures that you regretted, like, I mean, later Chad talked about silicone in his face and other people. Did you ever have anything like that? No, because I never went that far. Okay, well, that was <laughs> wise. Know. Even though you were crazy high in meds, you made a wise decision <laughs> about that, Venus. Yes. Okay, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, so you get to Strange Addiction. At the end of that episode, they do say that you renounced all things Madonna and you right. hung it up right. for years. Now, that wasn't planned, actually. Uh -huh. I told them I was quitting, and they were supposed to shoot another scene where I announced I was quitting. It was my last show. They didn't leave that in. They left that... Um, they left it in where it said I had sold everything, I gave it up. With that being said, the whole media got involved. Yeah. Every, like everybody, People Magazine, In Touch Magazine, freaking Rolling Stone, everybody was on my phone that first week it came out saying, are you quitting? What are you doing? Why are you doing this? You know, it was a whole media storm. Uh -huh. And the point where I really felt like a superstar and like a famous person was that weak. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh my God, like, cause I had inside I always felt like a normal person, but then everybody was so interested in my Madonna look. And then during all those interviews, everybody was like, why are you giving this up? Don't give this up. We love what you do. Right. And you, you know? were like, you know what? Maybe I don't need to quit after all. <laughs> exactly. I have spent a lot of money to look this good, honey. <laughs> I know. And then I told the dude, take a hike, bye. You know? <laughs>